sort of God complex, narcissism, hubris, darkness in a male personality can explain Elon Musk, Cam Newton, um, what is it, Nick Cannon, and men who have this harem of women that have eight kids, 10 kids, 12 kids. I have a slightly different take on this. I think that narcissism is the issue now, but I think the roots of this problem are a little bit deeper. And I think it has to do particularly with intergenerational trauma. I've had this theory for a while. Um, I wondered two things about black men that I didn't understand. Number one, uh, why we seem to have so many more closeted uh, queer men in our community. There's way more DL dudes, um, it seems, when it comes to percentages as compared to YT people. It seems like that. And also um, the fathering multiple kids out of wedlock with multiple women. Like I, I didn't understand the utility of that. It just seems expensive and tiresome and just like, how do you spend time with all those kids? Like how do you productively parent 12 children by five different women in five different households? Like how does that even work? So my theory has been this, it's a masculinity flex. Let me explain what I mean. How in this patriarchal world do we achieve masculinity? What does it mean to be a man? There's typical things that, that um, misogynists on this app mention, right? They always say um, protection, provision, uh, and siring children. Basically, you're a protector, you're a provider, and you're a father. Like the ultimate uh, conquering of a woman is to get her with child, right? You're a permanent fixture in her life. At that point, you think you own her forever. Right, a pillar of masculinity, sire and children. But think about the history of black men who are descendants of enslaved persons. When we were enslaved, you could not protect black women. Black men could not protect us from the master, from the dangers around us. They could not provide for us. There was no way for us to keep our families together. They could be literally sold down the river at any time. So for so long in our history, and even through Jim Crow, protection and provision, the two basic things, were not achievable by most black men, right? And the third thing, children. So let's talk about siring children. What was that like um, among enslaved black Americans? They would force black men on to black women in order to produce more slaves. Because when the triangle trade was outlawed and you couldn't import any new slaves, the slaves that you already had became more valuable because there were, there, there were shorter supply and short supply, right? If you wanted to get more slaves, you had to breed them and they would reward men for siring children on to their fellow enslaved black women. Black men were rewarded with special privileges on the plantation, you know, extra food, better lodgings, you know, whatever. They were rewarded by the master for siring as many children as they can for assaulting black women and getting them pregnant so the master could produce more slaves, uh, earn more wealth. So my theory is because for so much of our history in this country, we, our, our men couldn't protect us or provide for us, the kid thing became very important. A pillar of masculinity, siring children became very important because it's, for so many of them, it is their only opportunity to leave their mark on the world. It is the only, the only aspect of masculinity that they have constant access to. That you don't, you don't need money, you don't need position, prestige, you know, any idiot can knock a girl up. I believe that the generational trauma of slavery and Jim Crow created a community of black men where 
getting women pregnant became more important to them, especially in terms of how they express their masculinity, how they perform masculinity. It became much more important to them than it did to men of other races. Hence the spreading our seed with multiple women. Because it's just like on the plantation. You're rewarded, except not by the master this time. You're rewarded within your own community. Other black men will be like, oh yeah, he has lots of kids, legacy, blah, blah, blah. You get a social reward for fathering children, even if you end up abandoning them. So that's been my theory for a while. It's the most, for black men, it's the most accessible aspect of performative masculinity that they can do. That's been the theory. Makes sense, right? I think I might be right. So in light of this Nick Cannon, I can't remember the other guy's name, situation that's been talked about a lot on this app, I did a little digging and I said, I wonder if there's anything to support my theory. Cause I just hadn't had time or the inclination to really like get into it. And it turns out there's some data. This was from the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology in September of 2012. Racism leads to push-ups. How racial discrimination threatens subordinate men's masculinity. So they did a study comparing uh, black men to white men. And the result was for the subordinate class of men, the black men, if you experience racism, you feel like your masculinity is even more threatened and you will go farther to flex your masculinity. Here are the details from the abstract. Two studies explored the gendered nature of racial discrimination for black men focusing on the relationship between race, discrimination, and masculinity threat. And here's what they found. Black men who experienced discrimination reported greater endorsement of male gender norms and were more vigilant to masculinity threat cues than were those who did not experience discrimination. Additionally, black men engaged in masculine typed behaviors for our purposes, completing more push-ups in proportion to their experience of masculinity threat. So because racial discrimination threatens black men's masculinity, they cling much more tightly to gender norms than white men do. And they perform masculinity more aggressively, more push-ups, bigger muscles, more babies. I think that's at the root of it. I think it's the other things that black men have to deal with I think it's the racial discrimination threatens their masculinity so much they like hyper-masculinize everything they have access to. Anything that they have access to that um, will show signs of masculinity, they will cling to even tighter and do even harder than their white male counterparts. I think that's it. Multiple baby mamas are a masculinity flex. And through that masculinity flex, that subconscious masculinity flex, that there comes the narcissism. I think it's like all interwoven, but I think mainly it's performative masculinity. It makes black men feel more like a man the more children they sire. And it's the same thing with the DL men. Being a homosexual man, way, huge threat to your masculinity, right? So they will go above and beyond to keep up the image that they are straight while indulging their desires uh, secretly and not even telling those people closest to them and lying both to themselves and lying to the woman that they are married to or laying up in bed with who believes that they are a straight man. And the sad part about this is that secret, shameful sex is very rarely done safely. So these men end up bringing STIs home to their wives and girlfriends. The, the most common way that black women are infected with HIV 
is from a male partner who they thought was monogamous with them. Their long-term boyfriend, their husband. So I'm telling you, so what I'm telling you here is that the threat or the perceived threat to black men's masculinity is literally unaliving black women because the way they act out to preserve their sense of masculinity is so damaging to black women and children. Think about that. 